Hello, we are live. Today is May 6th, 2017. And I have with me Stephanie, Sure, Mark, Lila, Johannes, and Jim. Hey, Jim, and introduce people in your room. And hey, also, there is just a little joint. And you forgot Stephanie. I did Stephanie, yes. Hey, Stephanie. Hello. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Um, oh, in the room with me today is just Angie and Ray. It's sort of nasty outside, so I wasn't expecting a lot of people today. So, even in California, we have, we have 50 percent chance of rain. Of rain. Yeah. But in California, we have today 30 percent chance of rain, which is very oh. unusual. <laughs> All right. So, um, people. So this is a paid participation webinar, but watching is for, for free for everybody. And to to pay, go to Hukola and click on club. So we go to hukola.org and click on club. And just several people joined today and some people joined like last minute. So it is still possible to join. I will, I'm, I'm watching you paying and, up, and approving your membership. Uh, this is to support um, all our work and um, next thing we go we go in, in August we go to meet Jim in uh, Rochester Buffalo area upstate New York it's a workshop and to do the workshop you join at hukola.org and there is menu workshop so you cannot miss it and uh, I couldn't even see that one <laughs> okay Oh, there, is, there it is. Hukola.org, and I just click on workshop. You don't have to type in the whole address. Just hukola.org is sufficient. Okay. Uh, all our events are announced on the jump page. Also, just click on jump. It's a calendar. You can see it straight on hukola.org. So, cool. on workshop, uh, it's August 3rd to August 8th, five nights. And um, Jim and I will be teaching. Um, Healing, Galactic Reiki, Usui Reiki, Channeling, Telepathy, Psychic Work. We work on the Earth Grid, on the Energy Grid, and do collective work, and then go home and and uh, continue this uh, work on the grid. So we <coughs> uplift the Earth Grid uh, vibration. Very cool. I think that's all I have so far. We'll be working on um, chakras and all kinds of things as well, and uh, channeling classes, and there'll be all kinds of stuff. Oh, we have another person in the room. John Bailey just came in. Hello, yeah. Hello, how are you doing? And we have Astrid. Astrid also. just came in as well. Just came in. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody. So among the questions for today, and Christine, welcome, Christine. So among the questions for today, um, Andy mentioned that there, is, um, there was a promise of a government meeting with uh, Girk Whitney and uh, some, sometime around that time. So maybe there is an update about it. Um, it's uh, at the end of May into June, the next one. Ah. Among Last the, year was in August. This year it's in May into June, and then they're ha having another one in November, I think, or October. I'm not sure. They they announced the uh, May into June one, but I'm not sure what the next one after that is. Um, among people who wanted to join, um, I mean to invite uh, I wanted to invite humans which are knowledgeable knowledgeable about um, runaway civilization and secret space program some humans from the space to have an update on what is happening in the space just in human language and human values okay. who else has someone to invite we had I think that uh, somebody invited Elijah okay Elijah is good Anyone else? Anybody, Angela. <laughs> uh, uh, Anybody, oh. Angela. Okay. 
Mother Gaia. Oh, Mother Gaia, very good. Anybody else? Astrid Sarah. says. Sarah. Sarah? Yeah. You know, what is Sarah? You know um, Abraham's. Um, oh. A wife, know. Abraham's wife, Sarah. Yeah. It'd be interesting to get a wife, Sarah. perspective of what went on. Oh, yes, because she, but poor Sarah, I felt bad for her because she got left out of a lot of things. Yeah, but this is the year of the women. Yes, and Sarah is, a woman. Sarah is the wife of Abraham Lincoln. She had a really? rough life. Really? She was? I, was I think that was wife. Yes, she was. I was thinking of, uh, okay. Abraham. What other Sarah are you thinking of? Abraham. Well, you said Abraham Lincoln. I meant yeah. Sarah of Abraham in the Bible. From the Bible. Oh, Sarah's Abraham Lincoln. Uh, uh, Abraham out of the Bible is Sarah. All right. Sarah, right? How about Sophia from the Dragon Tribe? <gasps> oh, yes. Who? Sophia. She is God's female counterpart. Sophia. Oh, Sophia from the where? It's called. She's called Sophia from the Dragon Tribe. But she's got God's female counterpart. Christ energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Interesting. Very good. I never heard of her. Very good, Michelle. Astrid um, has typed. Let me let me read the Astrid message. Astrid, whoever has the highest message for the group. So it's a generic invitation for the highest message. Sure, right. go ahead. Sure, sure, yeah, I would actually like to hear from maybe a race that we haven't encountered yet, maybe a high dimensional race. Okay. I also had, right. uh, I had an invitation for uh, hybrid children and hybrid people to speak. I like, I, oh. I really like their messages and um, they're very relevant to what we have. Okay. Oh, I have a good one actually. Great idea, mm -hmm. kids. Some of them are like old people already. Does anybody have any blessings? All right, I'll, I'll do a blessing. Take a breath. Breathe in their energy of angels. Breathe in the energy of angels. Breathe in the energy of angels. Be high, stay high, aim high, be high, stay high, aim high. Um, go ahead. Hmm. There's a message about bringing things into line, into organization, into... Now it's the, oh, one more. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I didn't know my mic was on. <laughs> Thanks, Listen. Michelle. It was a message about bringing things into line, into organization, into perspective, and opening your mind to the thoughts of uh, new realities that are coming your way. Because you've been experiencing many things in this world and in the worlds around you, in the, in the perceptions around you, but you are going to start to perceive things in greater uh, more spiritual ways. Thank you. Yes. Oh. Everybody. Come on in. 
We have another one, Carolyn. Just. Be energized, be positive, and be of a good thought with one another. Treat each other as you would treat yourself, and you know that things will come to a greater result. Remember that we are all sensitive in many ways. May I do it? Who did you say? Yes. Peace be with you, calmness and health be with you. May the day bring you information that is needed. May the day bring you the thoughts that are positive and reassuring and bring you out of a place that may be darker than what you might want to be experiencing at this time. And let the sound of music help you be uplifted so that you may join in the chorus of the angels. I think it's time to start the channeling. Okay. All right, I will be uh, gone for a, a couple of seconds while I meditate. And uh, I do not know who will be coming first, but I do um, expect that someone will be coming very shortly. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Hold well on. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. I am Sophia. Welcome, Sophia. One with God in spirit and in unity. In all things we work together. In all thoughts we are as one, but yet I bring in a new dimension with a great greater meaning to existence than once was understood from the ancient times. There is something that I would like to speak to you about today. 
and that is your experiences in this world. I look and see all over the universes that your experience trains you and teaches you different things. Some experiences teach you good things and other experiences do not. But I have found it interesting that there are certain experiences that can teach good and bad. An experience of love can teach you great passion, euphoria, happiness, and joy. But in other situations, or even at the same time, teach you about betrayal, sadness, rejection, and things of this nature. Your experiences teach you and mold your actions, mold your words that you speak to one another after experiencing these different things. There are other experiences such as drug use that may bring euphoria and information from other dimensions. But in some cases, it brings destruction and it brings negativity in many ways. It takes away the brain functions when not intended properly and it brings about chaos. Therefore, it can be used for good and for not so good. I say not so good because you can learn lessons from things that are painful and things that are not as you might wish them to be. But you might also gain wonderful lessons from the positive side as well. There are many experiences in this world that you live in and other worlds that many live in that teach and are very valuable to you. But remember this, evaluate what the lesson is to be learned. Do not turn it into a lesson of anger or of penalty or of accusation. Remember that your experiences are your responsibility in many results, in many cases. It is true that there are times when other people have caused you to feel the pain and the result of the agony. But remember this, caused pain to others as well. Was it intentional? If it was intentional, then you must find forgiveness for that. If their pain to you was intentional, the same is necessary. However, there are so many ambiguities in your society, it makes it difficult to know where people stand on their good and bad percentages. I do not like the word bad, but negative would be better. But let me teach you a small lesson. You that have children, are you that deal with those that are younger than yourself? And you that deal with those that have experienced things that you cannot understand? Remember, your knowledge is about what you have learned from youth and what you have experienced in this life. Your experience is so long. You have lived so many years and have experienced so many things. If you have children, you must take into account that the child has not had the experiences that you have had and therefore is naive about actions. Their intentions may be good, but yet it may be dangerous 
to do what they are doing or act upon what they are acting upon. Therefore, is it your place to judge and bring anger to the situation? Not necessarily. Do you know the intention behind their actions? Not necessarily. So it is of good parenting to find out the intentions and the will that the child is carrying out. Remember, their experience is short, and they only know what they are experiencing in this short time, what they are told, and they are very curious about the world around them, as you once were and still may be. Remember, as a good parent, you do not throw judgment on your children without thinking about their intentions or thinking about why they have done what they have done. But a strong conversation may be what is needed. You may have to ask what their intentions were. <coughs> you may have to delve into their thought process. They may not even know completely why they are doing the things that they are doing. It may be peer pressure. It may be the thought that if they do not do something, they will be not accepted. Take these things into consideration. For once you were a child yourself, and you were the same in the same kind of reasoning. Explain to them that their experience level is lower than yours. You do not have to make it a point of negativity, but make it a point of wisdom. Ask them if they want to grow up into a wiser thought process or if they would like to just go with the flow, and that can be dangerous. Remember to relate to them that you felt the same way as they did at their age. And it is true that you did involve yourself with many of the same activities that are happening today. The thing is about this, these activities is in this day and age, they have become even greater and more dangerous than they have been in the past. Especially the drug use and the sexual interactions. There is much more danger now than there used to be. I know that they will not always listen carefully and that they think that your thought process is only for a selfish means to control them. Make, make it certain and make it of no doubt to them that it's for their welfare and your own. Do not take, in, take it out of context because your welfare, your understanding of the situation you want to be appeased as well as they do. So therefore, keep in mind that they are human and they are sensitive and they are unexperienced. Is there questions out there? I hope that I have brought that message to an understanding that is usable. Questions, anyone? I have a question. Yes. Um, I became aware of you, Sophia, um, via uh, Suelu from my The Lord's Chapel. And there's a book written by Kia Ra, um, I'm sure you're familiar yes. and I had started reading it, but I had not, but I have not read it. I, I have a sense that some really powerful things are going to happen when I read it. 
powerful realizations mostly. Yeah. Things around you change with your actions and your decisions. Mm -hmm. Remember that you are in charge of many of the things that happen in your world. That it is true that those around you influence your decisions and the atmospheres that you live in. But mm -hmm. you must take charge and you can change those facts at times. You will be pleasantly surprised with many of the things that you read in this book. However, it is only a drop in the ocean of what information is available. Right. So when you introduced yourself, I'm not sure that I want to... I. This is my understanding that you are kind of like the Christ consciousness in um, divine feminine form. Divine feminine is necessary for every culture because they are equal. Divine feminine is equal to divine masculine. Mm -hmm. Without one another, Existence is limited. So in our human history, are you referred to in any ancient texts? Not by name. Okay. And so your name did not come to... It was own. not appropriate at the time mm -hmm. because there was struggles with men between men and men and to introduce an answer as becoming more feminine would not have been acceptable in this day and age and as time moves forward the acceptance of androgyny is more powerful than any male or female separation Right. So is I, I'm not um, aware of you until I heard of this book, The Sophia Code, The Living Transmission from the Sophia Code. I have always Prior. been since, learn, since God has learned about the feminine side of creativity in a more direct way. So how long has that been? Fish. It depends on what world you live on. I see. How about Earth? Since Mary Magdalene and Jesus Christ. Ah, beautiful. I am so honored that you are here. Thank you so much for being here. Much love. I look forward to you are welcome. Some time with you. I have always existed. But my persona has not been identified as separate from God. But now it can be in some ways because of your identification one to another. When looking at God at one point in time in history on your planet, only the masculine could be recognized because it was that the man was dominant over the woman and for the female to be equal was not so but now things have changed do you feel like that's going to remain true under the united states administration and all the shenanigans that are happening I am not sure of the question, but I will tell you this. We will remain true, male and female, together in one God forever and for always, no matter the situation or consequence. Excellent. Thank you. I have a question. Yes. Uh, my name is Leela, and I would like to know what manifestation of God are you personally connected? 
if that is a specific uh, manifestation of God which you are connected with and associate, or you just are uh, connected to the everything in one, like all I things. am connected to all things. Okay. There is no... The name Sophia is just to recognize there is a feminine side to God, not to separate it from Him. Right, and also uh, the four, uh, the uh, the female side of God also got unlimited names. So now I understand. Oh, of so you are, yes. So you it are is that that which resonates with you within the God element, the God being, the God existence. What you re relate to the best is what must be the learning tool. Whatever you can relate to, learn about it, and it will expand into the greatness that is. You can never possibly understand the entirety of God, and no one ever will. But you may be able to understand his greatness as we are together, expanding always. How is your... Uh relationship and maybe uh, connection to Elohim's group? Elohim is a separate entity from God. Elohim is under God, given a mission for God. You see, there are those that will be helpers to us because we would like to do the things that make us happy as well. But there is much help that is needed with the people that we have created. And so we have created communities that help your community. Angels for messages, information, healing. And so therefore, we are not alone in servicing the universe, but are continuing to create and continuing to love and bring into existence greater love and understanding always. And the last question, uh, so you must be very close to Mother Gaia because she's a female too. Of course. Mother Gaia is a friend. She is an entity that can exist in many sizes, shapes, and colors. She is not omnipotent, but she is of great value and of great use in many ways. Thank you. I have a question. Yes. Hello, Sophia. Um, it's El. You were speaking about the children, and I want to ask, um, do you think that it's good to teach the children to meditate and to have telepathy from a younger age? Or maybe just wait them to be curious about it at some point? All things that are taught are valuable to the child, even if they are not good things. But these things that you will teach are good for them and will help them expand in their understanding one to another. Many things are taught by parents such as prejudices and hatreds. But if you teach meditation, love, and positivity, are your children not better off growing up in this realm than in one of great confusion and misunderstanding? they will definitely be a part of negativity if they grow up being taught negativity. Yes. Um, I would uh, have a second question. You said that you have uh, seen many universes. So there is uh, 
what would you say we have a lot of galaxy if uh, galaxies in our universe but you said there are a lot of universes can you tell us a bit more about this there are many universes for more than one reason there are universes that we created that have different dimensions within them different densities and understandings and uh, different cultures to learn one to another there are universes that are filled with water and they have a different kind of understanding how life should be they have a different understanding of how things should they have different densities as well but they move within a liquid thought process there are densities with living fire that brings out different kinds of uh, life forms, different kinds of modalities that you could not be part of in any way, but yet do exist in their own realm for the, their own reasoning and bring about thought processes of how that particular element can be in charge and can be submissive and know how to control one thing with the other and how to become a mass or a less dense property there are other universes filled with different things with plants and that stretch out into the universe that have an identity of their own they're mostly just um, dealing with their kind of thought process, their intellect, and how to deal with that kind of life form. So yes, there are many, many universes, and they are different one to another. Thank you for this answer. Not to even mention parallel uni universes with this one, where things are the opposite of what they seem to be here. We judge not all the things that happen in these universes, but love that they can understand and move forward in a life that can eventually learn how to use positivity and love and unconditional love as well in the most unique and wonderful ways um hello, sure do you want to speak up go ahead hello greetings uh, I want to ask you a couple of questions. First of all, you mentioned uh, Elohim earlier. Yes. Um, I know about four L groups, El, Elohim, El Yah, yes. and El Yim. I was wondering if you can tell me about the three other uh, L groups, if it's allowed. They are not in your area at this time. But they will all eventually be here at some point. The other L groups are one of great understandings, one with another. You have L groups for medical, for communication, for healing, for uh, the mental uses of the brain. There will be ones that will teach how to open the brain processes there will be one l groups that will know of how to command different elements in the universe there will be other l groups that will bring communication of a different sort to all different kinds of species including humanity they have their own unique and different styles, but they are of God and they make themselves known in a rich and 
and wonderful way. And from what I know, the L groups are made from uh, light beings, angels, um, creator beings, and yes, something. you can be you can enlist into an L group if you wish. If you feel that this is something that you can help and it is a highest excitement, angels, creator beings, and very awakened souls that have joined after much thought and understanding, they can become a part. I see, and I asked it a couple of times, I got different answers, but I know that there's a specific, more, more or less a specific number for how many beings are in each L group, and I heard there are like around 2 million creator beings or something like that in the entire universe. Do you know what is the exact number? Exact numbers cannot be given because uh, creator beings go from universe to a universe. Two million in this universe, perhaps, very close number, but they move and change. Creator beings can also become part of civilizations, which changes their status in some way. They are still creator beings, but they are also part of a civilization that is not a creator being status. So therefore, trying to pin down the number of creator beings is futile. It's always changing in the sense that they move inter and inter-species and one with another they can multiply as well. Hmm. I know that they are reincarnated, and I know that they can visit other universes, parallel universes, but it's not to me that they can go completely to a new universe and start doing whatever. That's interesting. They can if it is given permission. And God and we as God do permit the creator beings to move freely. I see. And from my understanding of what you're saying that you are, because I know that God is all that is, so you are an aspect of him, like there's an aspect of a male counterpart, you're the female counterpart, but God is the, the absolute of everything. Yes? Yeah. Yes, because neither that, is that oh. I believe he is the origin of all things. Yeah, he it's actually it because of language language barrier we say it, but he's not a male or female. So you are the female counterpart. Well, there's a male counterpart, and he is the sum of everything we that exists. We have to identify ourselves, male and female, because we are all things. And yeah. without the identification, something would be lost. Yeah, that's what I meant. Um, thank you very much. And I was wondering, one last question. Uh, every now and then, I feel like I, um, I'm like feeling my heart chakra and like a nostalgic uh, feeling like being more aware or more alive it's they comes and go and it's a very dist distinguished uh, feeling but i don't know how to summon it it comes every now and then it's a wonderful feeling can you tell me what it is maybe you have any any advice for me how to summon it when you come into contact with creator beings or with God, 
there is a certain element of joy of excitement that you will feel if you are one with that being this is what you are feeling and this is what will continue to help societies move forward towards god the ascension is forever and ever moving toward a god existence you see you are in third dimension and as you move through the different densities you get become closer and closer to a god density and once you reach the closest areas to god every bit of your body will be filled with joy every molecule every part of you will be enhanced with beauty joy and excitement yes uh, you made a lot of sense to me in uh, many areas and uh, thank you and it's very nice to meet you much love. thank you and always eternal and beautiful love to you I want, hi thank you i wanted to ask a question which is very relevant to me at the moment so imagine a triangle uh with the violence in one corner willpower and ability to manifest in another corner and um, sex in the third corner and until now i was treating all those as separate but i realized they all have the same component they're all similar they have um they overlap to each other can you comment what is that component how it is built how is it designed from the spiritual perspective what's the common commonality and difference between violence and uh, is you may separate them if you, if you wish and they are separate in some thought processes however is not the triangle one piece all things fit into the triangle for the triangle is the power and there is power given to all these things for a reason. So you, you may separate them or you may combine them. But remember to put a positivity on them. Even violence can have positivity if the intention is positive. Now some may disagree with that. But the positivity that comes in all thought processes must be given some accolades for they are thinking of positivity and not of destruction now this will lead this to an end because they will realize in their growth that destruction is not the answer and they will realize that one thing separated from all the other things are not an answer unto themselves, but all things combined and understood as a whole and accepted as a whole can make more sense. But remember this, not everyone can comprehend what life is about in one session of life that is why there are many reincarnations and that is why there are many names for god is to give many aspects and many different understandings of who god is and what life is but to understand life in general takes a great opening of the consciousness and bringing together of life into one huge and very con uh, connected thought process. Nothing is separate from man, and man is not separated. Thank you much. Um, another question is the question of theodicy. There is another triangle there, the triangle of uh, God being all-powerful, all-knowing, and all-benevolent. 
And all three kind of contradict because there is still evil in and negativity in the universe. Do you have a comment on that? Yes. The, tr the trilogy, the triangle, the trinity, all are of the three, which is a powerful number that gives basis for many things. And much energy comes from three. Therefore, as Father, Son, and Holy Ghost would suggest that three in one, you will discover that God in abstract energy, the Holy Spirit in kinetic energy, and the Son in flesh and blood, but yet still of the same energies of the Father and the Spirit, create all things in the universe. Now, I am not sure that your question was asked for that answer, but that answer is included in your answer as well. Well, the question was why there is evil in the universe if God is all benevolent, all powerful, and all knowing? Because free will was given. And free will it does not always mean it will happen the same way as God intended. There were thoughts about all different kinds of things that run through lower species and lower beings. And they are able to create because God gave them a creative energy in their soul, and so therefore they created that which was not there to begin with. Thank you. You also mentioned uh, the trinity of uh, Father, Son and the Spirit, and yes. there is. Um, I just recently learned that the Spirit is just a code name for the feminine energy. Is it right to say it's just uh, mom, dad, and son? That's all. Do not be confused. All aspects have masculine and feminine portions, even Jesus as a man needed the feminine to become whole. So the spirit would also be masculine and feminine, and father would yeah. be masculine and feminine, and son would be masculine and feminine? Yes. Thank you. That's all I have. Um, thank you very much, and we invite uh, more people uh, someone who can speak about the um, contact ideas. The contact with, with aliens. Contact with aliens. Ideas about the contact with aliens. Very well. As you wish, people of Earth. Can I just say something before you leave? Go ahead. Go ahead. Hi, uh, it's you again. Um, I learned uh, from someone who channeled Bashar that the feminine energy is creativity and the masculine energy is to bring uh, ideas into existence. So actually everyone has feminine and masculine energy within them, male, women and everything, just a matter of balance. I see they see it that way. And yes, it is true that every person has the masculine and feminine energy within them. And how they use it is up to how they perceive their soul and what is to be used that is within the soul. But do not be confused that the feminine is only the creative and the masculine is only knowledge and ideas. They can be interlocked and they can share one with another and be molded one with another. Creativity and intellect, mind, body, and soul, and spirit. 
They are all connected and mold one with another. Therefore, do not put a label on creativity or a label on intellect, for we are all one. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Much love. You are welcome. And now I will bring someone to speak about aliens and how to get to know them better. Is that the correct way to say it? Yes, absolutely. Thank you much. Blessings on you. Greetings. I am Remulac. Hi, Remulac. How are you? I am very well, thank you. You have asked for someone to come and to explain how to get to know aliens better or to be introduced to them, perhaps. I am someone with a perspective on this. Since some of my children are on your planet at this time as humans. But remember this there are all kinds of species that exist in the universe, and not all of them can you get to know in the same way. There are very friendly species, and there are those that are not so friendly. There are very positive species. There are very neutral species. So therefore, getting to know these species and becoming friends with them is a matter of learning who they are and what their protocols are as well. Humans have many different protocols, one culture into another, and so just look at your own world and see how complex getting to just know those people around the world are. And then that will give you an inkling of how difficult it will be to get to know all the different species in the universe. Because there are many. One thing I can tell you is this. Whenever you are meeting certain species, there are those species that have certain protocols that you have no idea what they are. You do not know how to be friendly, and one of your friendly actions may be a hostile action to them. So therefore, inaction or no action is probably your best um, solution. Let them make the first action. Now, it may be that your actions uh, may not interlock with one another as far as understanding. There is one species or two that assault you to say hello. But that is their way. And they are reptilian species. But they are learning that that is not the proper way to act with humans. There is an insectoid species that pushes you up against the wall. That is their introduction to you and saying hello. They do not take into consideration that you have a fragile exterior because they have exoskeletons that are difficult to penetrate. So therefore, pushing each other against the wall is not painful. But to push a human against the wall in the same manner 
bones. So therefore, yes, getting to know your species around the universe will be difficult, but there is learning going on. So we will let you know that we are learning about who you are and how to say hello and learning how to communicate in a way that is more amicable than once believed. Now there are many species and some are very similar to yourself. Our species is a very higher dimensional species and therefore we cannot interact physically with you unless we had protection and you have protection as well. But you would be able to just barely see us in some of our looks and we would not seem to be humanoid at all. However, we do have arms and legs, but they are not made the same as yours. They are more energy than they are physicality. Hey, Ramon, no. thank you very much for speaking. Um, I might have pronounced my question a little bit uh, too generically, but um, the idea of the question was that we seem that our world is in a crisis and we hurry up to find a solution for that. And for us, the solution is to speak to people outside of the world who are knowledgeable about the forces that are coming. So. Uh, we invite the hybrids to speak to us, uh, humans out there who are really knowledgeable about the political situation out there, who is involved in political and uh, military situation about the runaway civilization and uh, about the... Uh, well, you realize problem. that you may speak to them, but they are not allowed to interact with your peoples. All right, so we need someone who, who is allowed. Maybe Lakesh could be good, Takur could be good. Some people who know who, who can really give us practical perspective on things are coming and things are happening now in uh, in solar system and in outside world close to us. Very well. You realize they cannot be interactive in the sense that they can change anything that humanity does. They may help with the weather and they may help with seismic and things of this nature, but they cannot intervene with your own doings. But I will bring someone to you. Can I ask a quick question before uh, he goes, uh, uh, Max? Thank you, yes. Oh, thank you. Yes. Is there a... Hello, this is Stephanie. Um, blessings to you. Is there a species called... Uh, Altarian that you're aware of? And if so, is there anything you can tell me about them? Thank you. What did you say? I missed the first part of the question. Is there a species that you're aware of that's called Altarian, Altarian, or, or Altarian? Yes. yes. That you, oh, okay. Because they um, made contact with me one morning right before I was getting ready to meditate and and it said Altarians, and I had never heard of them before, and I just wondered, um, again, if they existed, and what you might be able to tell me about them. Thank you so much. The Altarians are bipedal and fairly humanoid. They do have uh, a blue silver skin, and they do have some features that humans do not have. They have horns or... I'm not sure if they're actually horns, but they're sensors on the top of their heads. And they do have um, sensors under the, on the sides of their bodies that look sort of like gills because they were at one time uh, water creatures many millennia ago. So, but they are benevolent and they are wise but they uh, avoid humanity because their spirituality is high. But you seem to be someone that they are interested in because you have a great spiritual sense about you. And so that is why they have taken an interest to you. Thank you for that. Very well. I will bring... Lakesh to you now, for he wants to speak. Wonderful. Thank you much. Thank you. 
Namaste. 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 Well, hello, I am Lakesh. Hey, Lakesh, long time no here. It is good to be here. How is everyone doing today? It's a little rainy, but outside, uh, otherwise it's great. I care not about the rain. I just want to know how you're feeling. I'm very positive. <laughs> Hi, very good. Excellent, excellent. Hello, now, what is, you have, what is your question? Uh, just an update. What's happening? Uh, it's nice to know the things in higher spheres, but what's happening in solar system? What's happening with uh, runaway civilization, secret space program, things of that sort? The secret space program is fully in effect, and it is linking itself with extraterrestrials, but very uh, carefully. It has linked itself to Grukvik near, but not in a very close way. They have communicated and they are uh, understanding one another, but they are not in alliance with one another necessarily. The secret pro uh, space program also aligns with other countries, and, and they call it the secret space program in all areas of the world that they are connected. And the reason for them is to uh, work on backwards engineering a lot of the different technologies that they are now aware of. And it is difficult for them to get the right power sources. However, they have received some information from the reptilians and from uh, a stray bunch of you yills and have given them some power sources for some of these uh, different uh, vehicles and different uh, things that they are using. So that is one thing. Uh, another thing, there's a lot of, yes, I know that there is a lot of um, renegade humans, as you call them. Uh, now, the reason for this is because they are in an area that they are actually helping with some galactic needs. They are on uh, Karu and Antony, and Niti, I'm not, I cannot pronounce the name of the planet, and they are, they have been taken by permission, they have given their permission to go, and the reason is they are scientists, uh, those agriculturists, and people with great knowledge about uh, how to help with some of the things that are happening on these planets. Now, you, there is quite a few of them that have been taken, and many of them have been taken under the guise that they, are, they have passed away, or they have disappeared, uh, or they have moved somewhere, and they are out of touch. And so, Many of these groups of people or have left the planet under the guise of being dead, really. And so they, it is that they are not missed and people are not curious about their disappearance as much. But within the last 53 or 54 years, about 118 or no, 180 thousand humans have been taken away from this planet. Is there any questions about that? Oh, do you want to know what they're doing? Um, first of all, they're, in, they're learning about new civilization. They're learning to integrate and uh, become a hybrid civilization with the cure, 
and with the ITC or IZT or whatever it's called. And they um, are in the Alpha Centauri, well, far beyond. They're, they're actually several galaxies behind Alpha Centauri, uh, but they are learning many different things and working on um, different things that will help the galaxy to survive. Just as Grok Fichnir is working with serums and things of this nature, they're working with agriculture, DNA uh, manipulations, and things of that nature. They are actually a very benevolent group and get along very well. Uh, Lakesh, hello, how are you? <laughs> so, what you're saying is that the 180,000 more or less scientists that are believed to be dead and they are actually working all around the universe? Well, yes. What happened is this. There are some that we, well, not we, but they have talked to. I also talked to them, but I, I was not part of the, the uh, way they left the planet or the reasoning at all. But I did talk to them on the planet of Cure. So, um, but yes, what happened is it would, an, an explosion or a laboratory, would explode or something of this nature and instead of them finding the remains of the bodies or anything those bodies would be taken and um, because they were already knew that they were agreeing to come to help the the different uh, needs of the planet so and then some would die perhaps in an automobile accident or a, a plane crash or whatever but their bodies would actually the scientists would be all just taken uh, submitted to death actually but they would be believed to be dead yeah actually the many NASA scientists dying in recent years so maybe that's making sense in a way yes well uh, I cannot speak on that, but I can say that uh, that makes a lot of sense, yes. I see, and is there anything new about uh, like any movement from the government or the group for near anything new, not related to the there, government meetings? Uh, yes, um, yes, there are a few things. You know that there is some human population on Mars as well. A uh, very small amount at this time. They used to have a lot more, but they were they were taken there uh, by transporter, not by not by um, vehicle. But uh, the secret scientists had learned how to uh, use some transport items that can transport great distances, just like they had back in the Egyptian. Um, pyramids and things of that nature. The same with the Machu Picchu and the pyramids there. They also had um, transporter devices, many different places. I see. Okay. Um, thank you. Well, oh, I didn't actually answer that question. Yes, in the galaxy, well, in the solar system, well, which is also at attached to the galaxy, of course, but uh, there's a lot of things going on intergalactically. Your place is very popular, of course. Blue avians are still in control of controlling who comes in and out of the solar system. There are some energies in the solar system out by Ganymede or whatever. Yes, I think it's Ganymede. Uh, that's uh, very curious. Uh, it's there is some energies that are being checked on by the blue avians that are uh, they do not quite understand. It could be a species that is just an energy form. So 
uh, but it is something relatively new, and it is affecting the energy on all the different planets in one way or another. Uh, it's affecting Earth uh, energies in not a negative way, but it's actually pulling some of uh, the magnetic field a little out farther into the atmosphere, if you, will, if you can understand that. So it is affecting humanity, but we're not sure if that's negative or positive, really, at this point. It just seems to be uh, not affecting humans too much, but um, it is affecting some quite a bit, a few. So we're not sure what to do about that because it's pulling on the energy fields of all the solar systems. So this is something that we're just now learning about. Also, uh, I, you, you're very interested in the runaway uh, population. And they are very much, very, very happy where they are. And the functionality of the planets that they are on, uh, Cure especially, has a system of no monetary value whatsoever, but they, they have great uh, trading, they have great uh, abilities, one to another, and you can raise up in society by doing many different things. It's similar to our society in some ways, but there are some differences as well. It seems to work for them. Do they have technology there? Of course. Yes, they have great technology there, and it is, but it is not like evident. I mean, you, there's great technology for movement and for uh, broadcasting of information and for um, things of that nature, but it's, it's not obtrusive or intrusive. It's, it's very much worked into the, into the uh, design of the buildings. It's very much worked into the artistic formulas that they have uh, for um, their culture. So some artistic, uh, an artistic painting may have abilities beyond what you might think, but it fits in and, and you, are, you become aware that um, their technology is uh, very unobtrusive, very not invasive to you at all. Greetings, Lakeisha. Um, I was. Yeah. I'm Christine. Yes, I know. Um, <laughs> I'd like to know. Um, sometimes on Facebook, people post these grotesque uh, body changes that um, some people go through, where they have um, horns put on them and they have their face all tattooed and. I mean, really, so that they are not looking human at all. Are these hybrids who are just having a very difficult time to adjust? They are those from other dimensions that are having a hard time adjusting to Earth. Yes. But they are not necessarily hybrids. There are a few that are. Uh -huh. But there are some Earth-born aliens that are just, they cannot, they do not like the human look, for one thing. They do not like uh, the density, and they it's hard for them to handle it. So they try to put themselves as closely into their dimension, no look, that they pre prefer as possible. And so there are a few that are like that on your planet. Is, um, I don't know whether to, um, well, I'm wondering if they're in so much pain, is it just... Um, it's emotional pain, not physical. Okay, so um, just sending them love is sufficient to... Um, there are a few that have physical pain, but yes, sending love and blessings and uh, whatever you can for them is helpful. Now, believe it or not, uh, there's a lot of angels 
incarnate right now or fragments of angels and they are having the some very difficult times adjusting as well because they are from a realm that is so light and beautiful and and calm and they're in this very dense now dense world and they are they can't handle it and um, it takes a while for them to come around but when an angel comes around in this density to understanding how to function properly their power is um, unbelievable I imagined um, them going to somebody to add wings to their back <laughs> there are those that have done this <laughs> oh <laughs> okay thank you very much for answering me oh you're welcome are there any other questions I have a question about reincarnation. I am not really done with my service to my mother Gaia. And if I would, uh, when I finish this life, my body existence, and I would like to reincarnate again, to do my service much more sufficient, would be that easy for me? I, what was the last part there? Would who, be that easy, would, would be that, well, Gaia, Gaia, the reincarnation here is mostly to yes. serve Gaia, this planet. Yes. So if I choose to reincarnate after this uh, life again on Gaia, would be that easy for anybody who wants to come in again? You would be allowed to come back in again, yes, I'm sure. If you had good reasons and understandings of and lessons could be learned and many different things. Uh, there are those that have chose to come back in many times in a row because they are not finished with either their lessons, their un identity, or their... There are many reasons why people come back into the same density over and over again. But yes, it would be allowed. But it would so be in different time, right? What? It would be in different time, right? Oh, yes. Absolutely. Are you all right, Max? Uh, I would, uh, would I have the option to choose the time when I would be reincarnated again? That depends. You have to get, I, I, I am not really sure about how that, that works so you would have to ask God about that when you get there eh, that's easy <laughs> yes that's wonderful so we can all go to God and talk to him first when you go when you leave this particular life existence you may talk to God whenever you wish well then I will not come back for sure <laughs> I'm sure many have said that very same thing but after a while, you it's boring. You crave being in a body and being in a, a certain density for reasons that only Service. you know. <laughs> right. To serve and progress and be more. Yes. To actually expand your knowledge of, of different dimensions, existence, and learn the lessons that cannot be learned any other place but in a density on a planet absolutely that's what the scriptures say over and over uh, yes. you know i i find out not so long ago that i have two pleiadian uh, children and one yael you yes. uh, could could you tell me how they are doing something what about are their names? i don't have a clue ah well, it will be difficult for me to research that. Uh, you would have to ask Gurk Fignir then. If you, okay, if you no have problem. your name, ask, ask Gurk Fignir and they will um, provide you with the names. They, they are attached to all the different hybridization programs that are out there in one way or another. They may not be controlling all the hybridization programs, but they are in touch with most of them, I would think. Mm -hmm. do, do you know some, uh, do you have a feeling that any child would like to come right now and just uh, talk oh, to yes. us? Oh, yes, there's many children out there that... Okay, 
Could you uh, bring some because we love problem. them? The, the only problem is they have to have permission from their parents. So, mm -hmm. so we could ask if there is anyone that has permission. Please. Uh, very good. Well, I will see you later, and if there's no other questions, I don't think I've answered all the questions properly, but at least there's some idea of, uh, of an answer there. So I will uh, let you go for now. We can and, and, and you answer question. wonderful. Yes. <laughs> what? Is it possible? You answer one wonderful. For Gabe? Okay, John. Okay. Ah, Johannes. Yeah, I, Gabe is writing me uh, to ask uh, a question if it's possible to have a love relationship with an alien in this life form. In this human there life. are those that already have that, yes. There are some that have a love relationship with aliens, even from your planet. So therefore, yes. But it will be more prevalent after first contact. And I have a question for me, if it's, if I can ask. Good, sure, yes. She connected to me, and her name is Sita. Can you collaborate on on her a little Who's bit? Who is connected to uh, I did not get the question. You're a little muffled. Um, my question was uh, my connections to uh, an entity named Sita. It's like a reptilian entity, I think. Ah, it's, it, it's, uh, it's not necessarily a romantic relationship, but yet there's a lot of affection there, isn't there? Um, one moment, please. Get you. Uh, yes, they, they have a great deal of affection for you. You have met in the astral several times. And they are wanting to be physical with you in some ways because they believe it's possible. But at this point, it's just an astral connection, and you are very affectionate one with another. Is that what? Is this the right connection I'm thinking of? It can be a mix-up. I think I, I have mixed feelings about about this entity, past lives. It feels like I had some past lives. Uh, with yes. the entity, but right absolutely, now, that is true. Yes, it's more of that. What you say now is more astral at this point because that's how I connect yes. to the entity. But I yes, felt like we had and their affection for you is very strong. Now you may not know how to how to feel about them, but their affection for you is very strong, and they may not show it in the the same way that you humans show it so you're they could be bothering you a little bit with who they are and what they're doing and things of that nature but they are very affectionate yeah i i, I love the connection and i love the the reminder so to speak i, I she reminds me uh, about my past lives and about who i am and stuff like that. absolutely and that is a great thing that she loves to do, but she has a great deal of affection. That's the only thing that's coming through right now. Not much information, just that she feels great affection for you and wishes that you felt that same way about her. Interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Rakesh, hello. Here is Selena. Hello. Hello. I, I, as you love poetry, I wanted to read uh, something from Angel that came to me that you say that people have fragments of angels in them. And we are one of those people. So uh, let me just uh, tell you a joke from an angel. Yes. If people were normal, it would be so tough. They would never be lower than the heavens above. If people were normal, they would jealous for things that only the angels could hear at and could think. That is true. And I love you, Lakesh, and everyone. Very true. Much love to you all. 
There is a hybrid child that does want to come through. Thank you. Bring it on. Very well, I will. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Ah, I am Anna. Hey, Anna, welcome. My father is Slava. Oh, wow. He will be happy to have your speaking. We speak a lot, but he does not always hear me. But we have many similar interests. He is very good with video and computer. And so am I. Oh, wow. I am older now and can speak more fluently than once. He speaks Russian. I am learning several languages from this planet. Tell about what you like. What I like? Yes. I like learning and I like kindness one from another. My father is very kind and good. And I am very happy with him from this planet. My, my parents in this realm are also good and are very understanding with who I am. I am happy to be a hybrid child. I feel special. I feel unique. I feel that I have something to offer the universe differently than others may have. But it is very humbling after a point because some do not appreciate your hybridization and they feel a little envious of who I am sometimes. Telepathy is strong with me, so I can tell these things. I love all peoples and all species, and I interact with my fellow hybrid peoples. What's your social circle? Social circle is broad. I can talk to people on other planets like you do on your Facebook. And I can talk to people around me like you do in your meetings. So it is that I have a large social group. What's your level of development? What would, you, would it correspond on Earth, in, to Earth age? To respond to Earth, I am a teenager on, wow. in my development as far as Earthlings are concerned. Are you into fashions? 
There are fashions that I find silly and fashions that are very acceptable. I will not change the color of my skin for fashion, but I will wear certain beautiful items or clothing, as you call them, for fashion. But there are some things that I do not like that are fashionable. How different are they from human fashions? They are very different. Humans cannot change the color of their skin. Humans cannot uh, wear masks to school or to functions. But yet that is acceptable here in some places. How, how is your dress different from uh, the dresses of your peers? We have learned to create our own look for ourselves. And so in the machine, I will call it a machine, it is a machine that makes clothing, I tell it what I want to wear and it will create it for me. What are your choices? What is uh, your typical style? I like bright colors and I like to have much ornamentation on my clothing. But some of it, I like it to be meaningful and tell them who I am through the symbols. Uh, Lila wanted to say something, right? Uh, hi, Anna. I would like to know, because you're a hybrid child and you're a teenager, who would you choose as a partner? A partner? What is your preferences? A hybrid male or somebody from the species what you are, the race? That is a good question because there are hybrid males that are attractive and there are also males of the species that I am born from that look all right too. I am not prejudiced, but I love all peoples, and it's more about the personalities and the actions than it is about the looks. Well, that's very much sure. <laughs> that's very but much sure. Looks are important to some extent. I have to admit there are some that I do not like how they look, but they are still nice. So do, at this point in your age, do you have a capacity to be telepathic with other teenagers? Yes. So that, that must be a big challenge to be, to be a, a teenager and knowing what the boys are thinking. <laughs> well, they can hide some of their thoughts just as I can hide some of my thoughts, I let, I let it be seen, the thoughts that I want them to engage with upon meeting me, but I do not let them see deep inside. It would be embarrassing. Do you have at this point in your uh, growth a, a goal, a picture, of the man who would who would who would uh, you wanted to be? Do you have a understanding already? What kind of man would you like to have as as a life partner? I would like to have one that is very happy and positive. Very, I think, bigger than me, because I want to be protected in some ways. Other ways I can take care of myself. But I am one who wants someone happy and positive. 
and maybe a little bit what you call funny. So I would say all that every chelky woman on this planet desire the same. So really? looks like that. You yes, desire... we do want. Yes, oh. we desire a man who protects us, even if we don't really say that. But every every healthy woman emotionally yes, and we do want that the man is happy. Uh, what's yes. almost impossible? That's that's very high. That is very high. I, uh, recommendation or wish because hardly nobody is happy here I mean truly oh, happy on the soul level people are happy here but find that it is hard to control what you think sometimes and it is true what you said there are days when some things come out that you in your telepathy that you do not wish for people to know. So we have to be more protective, but we are still learning how to use it like our parents and other peers. But yes, we like, I am surprised you like the same kind of emotions in men that we do i i am not surprised because i am an alien so i don't really ah. yeah so i don't really understand humans or desire their way of doing things so i agree with you 100 percent, and i desire the same what you do well that is wonderful thank you thank you to you too it makes me a little, I'm not sure the word in human language, I feel tingly a little. Well, the tingly comes from the connection, what this energy is right there, because the energy is similar, we have the same ideas, we can connect, and that's why you tingled from my energy. And I also love you and respect you for all what you are saying. And I'm Thank sure you. you. I am sure your parents and your father in Russia is very proud of you. And we all humans, every female who has a heart, we all love you and send you love. Because you are Thank wonderful, you. a wonderful example. Thank you. I appreciate your thoughts. Thank you. I Thank just you. I just wanted to share when uh, I was a teenager, I had a wonderful gift from uh, my teachers. They uh, organized tons, tons of camp camping trips. It was like 15 trips in a, in a year or more, maybe 20. And, um, and that was a wonderful experience when people are engaged in very natural housekeeping. You go to the forest and you take care of, simple things like boiling water or chopping wood uh, cooking cleaning uh, there was tons of rain so it was dirt but it was very natural very healthy and that was a wonderful way to to be engaged in natural activities and then communicate with your peers of both of both genders in uh, an environment where you are not facing each other but you're doing a common work so that was a very spiritual very natural and very good for um, developing uh, comradeship. comradeship. I do so not know friends first. what camping is, but I do, I do understand going places and interacting in different places. Yes, I can do that. So, yeah, the, the difference is that you go away from civilization and do it the ancient way by just doing no technology doing very very simple things like ah. cooking and uh, housekeeping and old ways cooking <laughs> i would like to learn cooking we do not have cooking here as you have cooking there are rituals that include such things as making food but for the most part the machine makes the food. 
Can I ask one more question? Not please? cooking. Go yes. Ahead. Hi, Anna. Uh, I have a question from Martina, my partner. Um, I don't know if you can answer it, but she wants to know if she has any hybrid children, and uh, maybe you're connected to them, and how she's connected to the... Uh, what is her name? Martina is her name. Martina. All right, one moment. I will check and see if anyone has a mother named Martina. Uh, they, no one here, but we will check it out. She may have hybrid children, but uh, I am only with about eight others here, so no one here has a mother named Martina. We will find out for you. Okay, thank you very much. Yes. Human mother. Human mother. Human father. Any more questions? Hello, everyone. All right, I will go then if no one has anything to say. Um, so you will. Yeah, yes. let, me, let me say you're wonderful. Uh, we're sending you much love. It was wonderful to connect with you. Your energy is great. And we wish to meet you in person someday in the future. I want that very much. I, I would know your, of your daughter and your son. Oh, and also Moshe. Yes, I, I miss them very much. Say hi to them telepathically. Yes, they are. I know them. I have met them. They are very fun. Thank you. Um, I invite, if you can invite um, Gunter Rusbaker, Gunter Rusbaker, also called Allendale and Shamus. He is one of the humans who is somewhere in the uh, outside world. He channeled in the past to us. What is his name? Gunter Rus Baker. Gunter Rus Baker, also called Shamus. Is he on the colonies? I'm not sure where he is, but he works with Earth. He is in, works with Earth, but he is on... Uh, there is one Eden. Gunter that is in works with Grok Fiknir. Sounds, sounds maybe right. He's about 70 years old now, and he lived first part of his life on Earth. I remember, yes. Oh, no, Gunter, I know who that is now. He's the, he is connected with Grok Fiknir, but not on the, not on the ships. Mm-hmm. He is on a planet with his alien wife. Oh, wow. One moment. I will see if I can get him. Thank you. Beers. Goodbye. Goodbye. Love to you. I'm Gunta. Oh, uh, welcome, welcome. Thank you very much for coming. It is a pleasure to have you. Uh, they are telling me there's no time. We have 15 minutes. All right. What? Um, just um, how are you? What's new? Um, um, I am uh, a little startled to be able to be here, but they have called me into this, so I am fine. I am doing my same work as always. 
I am still working with Earth in some ways, and not the same thing as I was before exactly, but uh, we are understanding of what's going on there and all the changes. So tactics had to be changed a little bit to uh, agree with the energy there. Energy there is very much more chaotic. Right. More chaotic energy than usual on your planet in many different areas. Uh, the energies are very stirred up. The earth energies are now calming down, but human mental and physical energies are becoming greater. We, uh, we feel the crisis is coming, and uh, yes. we are looking for help from outside, at least for informational help, for advice. And so far, uh, not many aliens are engaged in talking to us. Uh, people, uh, aliens kind of talk to us about themselves, but kind of they're blocked when it when we ask about questions about us. You know, how can we get well, over the crisis? They are not allowed to sell you too much. There are some right. things that Galactic Council will not allow. So, but I'm from Earth myself, so I can take a few more liberties in the sense that I understand how humans are. Aliens don't understand how humans are, and so for them to speak about how humans are would be confusing the information. So I can tell you that the confusion on Earth is to some outbreaks in several different places, but not only in the United States, as you call it, but in other places around the world, they will start, suddenly start to see that uh, the uh, intentions are not pure, that are coming from different places, especially from the United States. They do not see pure intentions there, but yet it can be very uh, confusing to other countries because they do not look at uh, your culture the same way as you look at it with, while you're in it. You see, your country has many subcultures within it because it's large, and they just see one particular view of the United States, and it's usually not the best one. And so they get, uh, they have doubts and thoughts about what is coming next from that area. And so they always take the negative side because that is safest. If they, if they expect something bad, then if bad comes, they are expecting it. If they, are, they go to the good side and then something bad comes, then they are taken off guard. So at this point, they are negatively focused, which is adding to the chaos. Uh, we are a group of light workers, and we are not as much involved in politics, but we are thinking about the future. And uh, what advice would you give us? Uh, we, we can meditate, we can channel, we can somehow network. What, uh, what would be our role? How can we help? You can continue to do what you're doing, plus you can, uh, whenever you go out into your public, you can engage in positive conversation. Bring up the positivity as much as possible. There's too much negativity in your larger cities, and you need to bring that positivity up, and it's hard with as few light workers as you have to do that. Also, be yourself. Your example and be yourself. There is so many out there that are say they are light workers, but they go into work and become just like everyone else. Uh, from my, my self perspective, the situation is pretty much hopeless unless we have a miracle. 
Uh, and the, the miracle can come either from aliens or from you guys, the humans outside, or from God, but we, we need a yeah, miracle one way or another. We can only give you so much. We are only, we are few compared to you. Right. So what's your perspective? Are you following the developments? What can we do? What? Uh, yes. How will it resolve? There, well, it is those in power that are doing. You, you as light workers can only build your light energy and build your positivity. That is what I'm saying. Positivity, though, is much stronger than negativity. And so if you continue to work with building your positivity, it will make a difference. Uh, comment on my idea. So my idea was that we work with Girk Fitnir to build uh, YouTube videos and uh, send them from up there, from your space, from out of the earth, to the earth to basically to disclose certain information. Is it too naive? No, they've sent some already. But they cannot be found easily. But whenever someone finds them, they are changed in their thought process about some things. This is good. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Pete has a question. Pete? Pete. I do not see Pete. I don't see. I think he dropped. Any more questions, people? Hello, um, it's Elena. Uh -huh. Elena. Um, I would uh, like to discuss the free energy that we have on our planet and uh, more people or scientists that are awakening and starting building generators and uh, sources uh, or um, machines to collect this free energy. And um, as we know, the American government uh, years ago used to destroy this kind of uh, machines. But nowadays, yes. uh, all but, over the world, yes, yes. But once, let me explain something. And I have to be careful how I wear this so yes. that it's not, um, I'm not, I'm not breaking any rules, but that technology will return. But it will take some calamities and disasters to bring it about. The okay. information that Tesla had about the energy boxes that could run households for indefinitely is not gone, but it is not apparent to you yet. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty con concerned about it. If, if that information comes out, uh, people might use it as weapons, right? How can it, it be so? It can be used in negative ways, but it will be brought forth as a positive means of energy use. Okay. Any more questions? Yes, I have a question. It's Marlene speaking. Greetings. Greetings. Uh, you were talking about the Tesla energy boxes. Uh, there's a scientist known as Dr. Kesh on our planet who is working with a manufacturer in Italy. And he, they are manufacturing the smaller and the larger boxes. Are you referring to this? Those are, yes, but it will not become universal for a while. Manufacturing the smaller and the larger boxes? Yes. Yes, they are on the market. Dr. Kesh presented these uh, devices to ambassadors around the country. That was done in last April. And they gave, uh, the, he, Dr. Kesh asked these particular participants at this meeting to go back to their government uh, people, the heads of government, and they said, we give, you, give, we give you two weeks to present this and to come back to us with a solution concerning free energy. Can you elaborate on this, please? 
that will not happen in this economy uh, because it would mean the loss of millions, not just thousands, but millions of jobs. The people that are working with uh, electricity and different kinds of fuels that keep the, your world in, within energy. Uh, it would be the collapse of the economy if they would agree to it now. It has to be a gradual movement, but there will be something coming in your future that will cause some collapse of these kinds of things and will bring that into a greater light and a greater understanding and a greater necessity. Thank you. Uh, what, I'm, what I understand from this is um, that everything should happen a bit smoothly in order the positive vibe on earth for most of the people to be in balance. That is interestingly said, sort of correct. There are modifications and um, other parts to that, yes. I wonder what's your perspective on uh, the first contact? First contact cannot happen soon enough. Okay. That is my perspective of it. Although your governments push it out a little farther all the time. And who knows how far they will push it. But there will come a time when they will welcome it. Wonderful. Uh, any any clues on disclosure, official disclosure, unofficial disclosure? Disclosure is happening little by little. Are you watching any? But Go ahead. It disclosure is part of what what is happening in your society. Um, are you looking at our movies? Are there any movies you can recommend which would really like give us clues about what's happening? Well, there are movies, but they not all of them are 100% accurate. There are some like Arrival, if you've ever seen Arrival. I will check it out. That there are those species that want to come to the planet and make contact, etc. But there's so much missing from that movie that should have been added. And... Um, but that one is one that you should see because there are, are some facts in there that are actually true. Uh, have you experienced fourth density and how does it feel to you? Fourth density is, well, I'm from third density. Right. And experiencing fourth density was interesting, but I will tell you this, I prefer the third. Wow. But in terms of physics, did you feel like you can travel time and for density? Can you walk in I, the morning? I felt, yes, I felt much different, but I couldn't get as much done. I felt uh -huh. like I was not able to control myself as much as in third density. Right. Uh huh. Uh, are we close to ascension? It's a of control, and I do like to be in control. And in fourth density, it seems like there are moments when things are in slow motion, and I'm not a big fan of that. How is like, your health? How is your health? How is my health? Yeah, you are seventy or around that age, right? I'm in good shape for my age. So you're using alien technologies and you will live long and you are in very good shape, right? Yes. Nice to hear. Uh, somebody wanted to say something. I just wanted to say that um, from what he said about four density, um, I understand his experience is uh, like under the, um, und like taking some drugs, for example. Yes. It, yes, it was unrealistic. After you get used to it, though, it is all right but I still prefer my own density. 
I feel more at home in it, and I feel more comfortable with uh, how things work in the third density. Of course, what I have to do, I have to do in the third density. So perhaps that's why. And what, what do you get to do every day? Like, how, what do you do every day? Like, I do my studies and I do, um, I have to keep an eye on the different cultures for different and particular reasons. Um, what's your take on ascension? Uh, are we really, is it a legend or is it real? It is real. Ascension is real. But it's your perspective of it that can be very faulty. Ah, so what is faulty? How are we wrong about see, ascension? I, I am not allowed to discuss that because it's sort of philosophical. You must decide for yourself what the ascension is. The ascension is more than one thing. Some people think it is just one thing, but it is more than one thing. It is uh, the acceptance of telepathy. It's the acceptance of change. It's the acceptance of closer, closer spirituality to God. It's many things. Are we close to ascend it to the next level or is it a long process? It's a long process, but you have, you, there are some of your people that have already obtained it in some ways, but for the whole planet to attain ascension will take quite a while. Did, did you personally attend it? Attain it? Attained it? I attained it here, but not there. Oh, so you personally there have done that shift? We, I have done the shift, yes. Is it technologically or... Uh, say again? I am telepathic and I am closer to understanding of what... what personality thoughts and intellect are in each of my, my friends and relatives and know that it is not something to be taken lightly or something that is external i internalize all my friends and the people that i love wonderful was it technologically assisted or just you did it spiritually it was something that happened because of the examples of those around me. Wow. Was it human examples or alien examples? More alien than human. So is it right that yes, present? They, Go ahead. Go ahead. But yet there was some humans as well. The guidance was beautiful. So is it right that communication with aliens f physically as helps ascension? It can, yes. I can't say it always does, but it can, yes. Wonderful. Uh, we're running out of time, but uh, I have a question on your expertise, which I think is urgent. So it's really hard to imagine for us a future of Earth without money. What's your perspective on the future of our economy in terms of, sh are we getting rid of money or we, what, what will happen? No, there will be a time of transition. It, it, it could happen one of several different ways. What they foresee is that your economy will collapse and that something else will take over because they realize that if they would reincite, instate monetary values, that the same thing will happen again. And so that is what the prediction is, but it does not necessarily have to be that way. They can internally start changing systems toward away from monetary use and into other practices that are more beneficial for society but uh they must it, it must that is a very gradual uh change because not tear down the systems you have to build and exchange portions of them to make them more usable that, that that's my question i cannot imagine anything other than money I, instead of paper money we, can, we have electronic money are you saying something instead of paper money gold or electronic well, that, money can be some what, what can they, we use you can use uh, your talents 
barter. You, there is bartering like it was in the past, before there was monetary systems. There, you can use educational goals. You can use scholastic leadership and leadership in the fields as uh, ways to get ahead instead of just money because in the in many different societies you are rewarded not with money but with the things that you need extraneous from like food and water and things of that nature but things that you feel that would help you have a greater and happier existence those are the rewards that you would get and you get to choose those with each accomplishment and rung of the ladder that you move up wonderful thank you very much for coming i was so happy for many years i wanted to meet you and it's nice to meet you voice to voice uh come on come sure. again uh and we would be happy to continue that conversation very well uh i uh, can you give us a blessing a uh, blessing yes one moment i'll get one from the book of the higher dimensional thought processes thank you all right thank you dear my wife she hands me the book thank you hi I have to find one that's appropriate. Thank you. Ah, oh, here's one. Let your heart be at peace. Do not fight in yourself who you are. You are be the peace that overcomes all the trouble. Find out where you belong and put yourself in that place. For you are a piece of a greater puzzle, and you are light that shines through the window. And if there is something blocking the light, will it not show up as a shadow? Do not be the shadow but be the light and let all things become undamaged and corrected and mended so that you may know the perfection of who you are and that God loves the soul as much as he loves the person because the person is part of God's creation he is not here to just be a leader and a guide, but to be your creation, you in yourself, your uniqueness, that is a word, yes, your uniqueness as an individual is his pride and joy. Be not at odds with who you are, or be not at odds with who anyone is, for they are moving up like you are into the world of the unknown. Does not a flower break through the ground to see the sun because he is drawn that way and then flourishes with all the other fertilizations and waters that are all around? Let yourself be like that, natural, growing, beautiful, and kept. Much love. Much love. Wonderful. Thank you much. Have a good day. Have a good day. Come again. Come again. Thank you. Hello. Hey, Jim. Ooh. I invite more blessings if everybody, if anybody is available for blessings. Uh, 
Light works in patterns sometimes. And in the pattern of this light, we see that there are as many things growing. And so suck in the light and bring it to yourself so that you may grow as the flower that you are, as was mentioned. Be as the whole and not as the partial. I have a blessing. Go ahead. Next question. Okay. Go ahead. Pete, go ahead. We have seen him here. Who see a whole see a Wadokoa? TV here see a Wahosi Kiki. We see a Mohosakaya. Oh, ya manako who see me tea banaka. For ya mano ho so so yana. Ko ya ha ya ko so to hoya. Me di ki ha ya ma ho so daka. There are the ancients who have mapped far portions of the universe and still continue to move and travel. Be of good cheer that one day you will join them as you are growing and becoming enlightened. But you are still the seed. And you will still know the growth that will come very shortly. Blossom and grow. Let the light be with you. Anyone else? I have a blessing. Good. My father. Your hotness. <clears throat> Taki nawaha shishi awara ki yana sua kataha hi. Nasa ki awana hi ki awara ki. Nasa kaya hati awasa. Kaya hi awana hi akasataya hai awasi ki shi arwana ki awasana. No hasi shi arwaka ni awana ki akasayana. No hasaki arwana kasi arwati akasana. No hasi shi awara. Nama. Be kind one to another. Do not neglect each other. Use each other and grow from one another. Share your love and your light. Share your insights of what you believe to be. And from that, there will grow much deepness, much greatness, and much understanding. Be well. Seek each other out that are lovers of the light and lovers of the soul. Um, thank you. Kim, Leela, uh, and Mark, do you want to say something? You can speak English if you, if you wish. Just um, a I think Raymond wanted to give a prayer. Yeah. Super. Oh. Cover me. Oh. All right. Go ahead. No, he said Johannes covered it. So who, have, who else oh. wants to speak is fine. Anyone else? We are blessed to be all together in the part of the ascensions, and that itself I will consider a blessing and not assumption. Yes. Thank you. Marlene, Kim, Christine. All right. I'll, 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 I'll do mine. I'll do mine. Allah 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 Hum Hada Hana 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 Hum 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 Raham Ayan Hana Ram Hum 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 Raman Hana Hum 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 Allah Hana 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 be well, everyone. I called upon the highest energy to be with us today, and the highest energy is answered in the form of a great blessing of information, knowledge, and love one to another. Be well and outstretched so that you might know when communication is necessary. Thank you.
I guess we're done. <laughs> Have a great day, everybody. Thanks, Jim. Much Thanks, love. people, everybody in the Jim's room and everybody here. Everybody, thank you much. Thank you much. Thank you much. Nice. Thanks, right. Jim. Nice Bye. participation. Nice, Bye -bye. nice energy. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Hungry.